Hello, custom car enthusiast, and welcome back to Car Mechanic Simulator 2018. In the last episode, we went ahead and completed a story mission. And in this episode, I'm going to go ahead and work on a couple of different basic cars here. So let's see what I want to work on. We have this Reno small little car that's basically got issues with handling overall. Got this Chrysler, looks alright. Salem Spectre, it's alright. Chieftain, so it's sort of a classic car. Bolt Cape, also a classic car. And we have a winner. We've got a VW bus here, basically. So, repair all running gear faults, brake system needs fixing, repair damaged body panels. Yeah. We'll see what this is, but yeah. Nope, we're going to go with this VW bus here. Alright, it definitely is worn. Comes with the surfboard already on the top there. Awesome. And it has this unique logo because they evidently didn't have the rights to use a VW. So... It is what it is. Let's see what we got here. So we've got the running gear faults that we have to deal with. We have the brake system needs fixing. And then we have repair the body damage. So rear right door, trunk, left headlight, right headlight, left taillight, right taillight, front window, front left door window. Alright, so we will get the parts taken care of first on this. Let's go ahead and move it over to the first lift. Get it lifted off the ground here. All right. And so it is an MDIM V1 Gherkin. <laughs> Unique name for a vehicle. But as I said, I mean, really, what they've done in this game is they don't have the rights to use some vehicles. So what they do is just make up a name, basically have the vehicle there still. Evidently, I did not spell that right. Oh, I put an extra letter in there. Alright. So we've got all the parts here. We need the headlights. I know that. So we'll get those. We need the tail lights, so we'll get those. Rear right door, trunk. And then front left door, front right door window. All right. So. Need that, need that. Need the trunk. Then we need rear right door and we still need the front window. All right, so front window and rear right door. There we go. Oh, I was wondering, I was going to the other side of the car, I was confused as to what was going on there. Alright, so let's get those out, this out. Let's start putting these new parts in. And 
now I just need to replace the headlights and the taillights. So there's the headlights, and we'll come back here, take care of these taillights. Perfect. All right, now I did want to give credit to one of the people uh, who's watched my videos. They actually did come up with an explanation for something that I'd been struggling with. So I wanted to say a big thank you to Brian Isaacs. He actually posted on one of my videos a couple weeks ago and explained something. And I wanted to go over here a little bit. So on one of the story mission cars that I had, I had an issue where even though I had replaced the parts that were faulty, it still was causing me issues. And what he explained is basically, so let's say for example here, and this may come up with this car as well. Let's say that I'm working on the uh, this and I take off this rubber bushing because this one is bad. But I also take off this rubber bushing and this one is not. If I put the new rubber bushing I bought to replace this one over here and I put the used one that was here, which is still good, but it is the used one, and I put it over here instead, it will say that the part was not replaced. So that's the issue that happens with this. You have to replace the parts in the location that uh where they are faulty if you replace them with one of the used parts that was not faulty it does not count so the two different options that i sort well there's multiple different options of dealing with this for one as you sort of saw with the corvette that i'd done over the last uh couple episodes you can go ahead and just replace all the parts of that type, which I think, especially for things like rubber bushings and such, it's probably the way I will go. Just seems a little bit simpler. Another way to do it, and it's partially why we're bringing the vehicle over here to the test path, is that you can sort of find which ones are actually the issues and only take those parts off, not the other parts. As long as you only are replacing those one at a time, you won't have that issue happen. So that's the situation with it. It's sort of, I would call it almost a glitch in the game because realistically, if they're sort of saying you have to have a standard for the part, then it should be just the standard for the part. It should not be something where you have to ensure that that specific part is the one that's replaced and the other one is not. So, yeah, that's, as I said, thank you to my subscriber there who was the one that found this. I really do appreciate it. It does clear up the situation, so that way I understand what's going on. And as I said, thank you to Brian Isaacs for that. I do appreciate it. Now it's just a matter of sort of dealing with that situation. And so let's see with this vehicle if we can't handle it a little bit better than I have uh, previously. So first thing, just want to make sure we did get all the damaged panels replaced. Brake system needs to be fixed. We still need a few parts to be discovered there. You know what? I think we'll go ahead and actually just head out to the test track, test it out there, see if we can't find the rest of the parts that are going to need to be fixed and such. So that way we've got it all good to go. Yeah, let's take it to the test track. It's a boat of a vehicle to be taken on the test track, but we'll see if it's able to be taken care of in this way. This is definitely unique here. <laughs> Not exactly going to break any land speed records with it here.
Odd having that big piece of metal sort of in your vision as you're driving along. <laughs> I think we bottomed out there for a second. <laughs> So we'll see if we were able to find the other parts here with that. All right, we definitely did find some more parts that are problems there. So that is a good thing. But we are still missing some. As far as the brake system, we did find everything as far as the brake system. So that's good there. Let's go ahead and take it up into the air, see if we can do an inspection of the other parts. Let's go with the examine mode. All right, so basically I don't need to take off be examined by taking off the car. So here we can see like that particular one is orange so most likely it should be replaced. It doesn't have to be but it definitely could use it. Alright. But here we can see that these uh, don't have to be replaced, these different rubber bushings here, because they're okay the way they are. Alright, so I believe only the red parts are actually having to be taken off the car. Wonder if I've found everything now. Uh, still a part that's undiscovered there. Let's try the tire tread tester here. Just to make sure none of our wheels are at fault here or any of the issues. I mean, they're not good, but. They're not at fault, evidently. So really, the one part that we haven't checked is going to be this part here. And it most likely is our faulty part. Because I believe the front sway bar is already said as a bad part. So yeah, most likely it's going to be this part here. But again, so here's a perfect example. I'm going to, in order to take this off, have to take off both tie rods. And when I do... This one needs to be replaced, but I need to make sure that this is the one that I would replace with the new one. Otherwise, it's going to still give me the error of saying that it wasn't replaced. If this one here, even though it's still good, is put over here, it's going to give me that issue. So as I said, that's what's basically being talked about here. That's sort of the issue at hand. 
for myself in a situation like this, most likely what I'll end up doing is probably just replacing the majority of these parts. It does cost me some of my profit, but the fact of the matter is, I mean, I'm at $244,000 right now. Profit is definitely not an issue to me overall, so I'm more willing to deal with that ramification. I actually didn't have to take off this wheel, so let's just go ahead and mount it back on. But, yeah, so probably what I'll do is, like, in that front end, I'll just replace both sides. That way I don't have to worry about it. But I did want to let you know in this video that that's what's going on. Because I'm sure other people have encountered that same issue. And it is a very frustrating issue to come across because it doesn't seem exactly clear why it happens and such. So once I found out, I wanted to let other people know as well. Alright, so the brake shoes here have to go as well as that knuckle. So I'll go ahead and take the brake shoes off. We're going to have to take this part here in order to get to that knuckle in the back. And there we go. We got that knuckle. We'll head to the front of the car here. And with the front of the car, this side... The caliper has to be taken off, and the sway bar has to be taken off. And I would say this brake disc has to be taken off as well. Yep. Alright. Now, once again, same thing. If I put that brake disc on the wrong side it's going to give me an issue with it. So most likely what I'll end up doing is just taking off both sides. That way I don't have to worry about it. All right, so the only thing I need to take off still here is this sway bar. And I have to get over to the other side and deal with it before I can really uh, remove it. Now this side, a lot more needs to be taken off, so going to take this side apart pretty significantly. And I am doing this intentionally where I did not take apart the other side because that way I don't have two parts in most cases where I have to replace both. I only have in certain situations where I have to replace both. And the reason for this, like I said, uh, he came up with a great idea there where I could just sort of mark which parts are taken off from which side and such, and that is true. But it will often be a full week before I will actually create the next video and such. And so with that, I'll have forgotten where parts came from and such. And so the easier thing for me overall is just to be able to take them off not have to worry about it. That is, you know, I get that it causes issues, but as I said, it's not costing me that badly financially on these cars, so I'm alright with it. Alright, so I did get all the parts off that I needed. I'm willing to bet, and I just want to go check it here real fast. Oh, for one, might as well get rid of these pieces of uh, glass and stuff from the exterior that I'm not going to be using. Alright, I just want to see here if I was right. The uh, steering rack was not part of the issue. But there was a rubber bushing that was. There's actually a couple rubber bushings that are here. Now, as I said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just replace all the rubber bushings that I took off. 
And same thing here. Basically, every single part that I took off here, I'm going to replace. Even though some of them are in the yellow, I don't... Well, I mean, like this, I could use the upper suspension arm still because of the fact that I didn't take off the one from the other side. But if I've got two of them, I'm replacing both of them. Because, say, just like here, break this ventilated, I'm going to replace both. So the easiest way for me to look at this is by name, so that way they're next to each other. So even though only one of the inner tie rods is bad, I'll go ahead and replace both of them. It is going to cost me more money in doing it that way. I get that, but at the same time, that's going to alleviate that problem. Now, I would have caused myself a bigger problem if I had sort of disassembled the entirety of this side. But by leaving these pieces on that I did over here, I don't have to replace any of them, which will save me some of my money. Same thing in the back there where I left this tire even on, because there's no point in having it off. I can then see which pieces go where, and I only have to ensure that I replace the ones that are duplicates. So, hopefully that clears up some of the confusion for other people. As I said, I'm very grateful for the fact that his post did clear things up for me, and so now I have a better understanding of how it works overall. And so, definitely, I am very grateful to Brian for that. I hope he does see this, and just as I said, big thank you to Brian Isaacs for that. With that in mind, I'm going to go ahead and end this episode here. In between the episodes, as always, I will go ahead and purchase the parts that are needed to be replaced on the vehicle, and so that way in the next episode, I can go ahead and reassemble this, and hopefully we'll be able to get this vehicle back on the road. If you enjoyed what I did in this episode, though, please go ahead and click that like button. If you've not already, please subscribe to the channel, click the bell icon, so they are aware when I produce new videos in the future. Thank you, and I hope to see you for more Car Mechanic Simulator 2018.